Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the preference options. We're going to do that by going to where it says Audacity at the very top. Go to Preferences. Now let's go all the way to the very top. I want to explain that Audacity really does a good job at giving you good uh, default options. Uh, you know, what, what you start out with is usually where you want to keep it, but you can make some different option changes uh, depending on your system setup. So uh, this is fine. We're going to keep all this the same and pretty much this whole entire section. For the most part, a lot of these options, we're going to keep exactly uh, where they're at because that's exactly where they should be. Let's go to playback. Take a look at that. Again, uh, all this actually looks pretty much fine, so we're not going to really want to change this unless you have different options in mind. But with recording, we're definitely going to want to make some changes. Uh, I, I believe this starts off at maybe like 100 and maybe 150 or something. Let me go ahead and make a change to that. Uh, and as it says right here, as you can see, um, audio buffer, milliseconds, higher equals more latency. That's not good. We're going to go one ahead. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change this uh, to a smaller number so that there's less latency on both of these. And something like that will be perfectly fine. Also, through what would you see right here where it says playthrough? You're going to want to make sure that this box right here is ticked. So if it's untick, tick it. Make sure that it's uh, selected. And right here where it says sound activated recording, keep that as is and we'll go ahead and move on. I'm going to hit OK just to make sure that these changes actually happen and we're going to go back to the preference menu in a second. All right, so the changes have been made and uh, the system is running the way that I want it to. Under quality, again, we have this option right here where it says default sample rate and you can see that down here. But we might want to change the default default sample format, which is basically the bit depth of the recording, the overall recording at the end. Um, I think by default it is actually 32-bit floating point. I'd say 16-bit is just fine. It puts a little bit less stress on the recordings and um, the exporting and everything like that and makes things a little bit quicker. Again, it probably will help a little bit with uh, latencies uh, and different things like that. So I would just go ahead and keep uh, my options at 44100 hertz and 16-bit, which is CD quality. And everything else right here looks fine, so I'll go ahead and move over to the next thing. And again, this all these uh, audio options right here, these preferences for the inter interface look fine, so we're going to go ahead and move over, move over to tracks. And I would keep this the same too because this is what I'm going to be using during these tutorials. Uh, so, you know, for the most part, a lot of this stuff, go ahead and just keep the same. Don't change. Um, the one section right here that's important, I would say, is the library section. Uh, if you don't have this downloaded, I would download it just in case you want to import audio into your project. So if you're, um, let's say, using samples or something like that, you might want to use this so you can locate those samples uh, right there. So you can hit download. It'll take you to a second page. And then you'll be able to uh, download for the very specific um, system that you're running on. Okay, let's go back to the project. And then again, you could. Uh, this is also another uh, section for uh, downloading as well. So if you're inclined to do so, I would download. Let's take a look at this. Uh, probably not going to be messing too much with this during our tutorials and probably through your journey using Audacity. So we'll go ahead and skip that. Uh, this you might be looking into a little bit later. Uh, essentially, all the files that you make, all the recordings that you do before they go anywhere, uh, like being exported, they're located on a folder on your computer. And this is just saying where those uh, files actually go to. And you can choose the new location, but the default's fine. The warning section will, uh, leaving these ticked is a good option because it'll let you know, it'll prompt you, give you a window option that pops up and tell you, you know, different options when you're saving or uh, saving an empty project and so on and so forth. So I would keep that exactly the same. Effects, this is going to be a section right here that allow you to uh, either add different, like if this wasn't ticked, you could add that so to make sure that uh, any of these effects that you might have in your audio unit will actually show up in Audacity. 
So I would keep that the same or add any new ones that aren't ticked already. Now the keyboard function or the keyboard option right here, this is really, really important because it tells you all the keyboard functions in Audacity. So all the key commands uh, for PC and for Windows, they're a little bit different. For example, for new, uh, this is for a Mac, it's going to be command N. Uh, for a PC, it might be control N, you know? So uh, you're definitely going to want to look at this uh, window right here and take a look at all these different options. And it'll even give you an opportunity to um, make new commands for save project as, let's say you want to do uh, save project as command plus uh, S plus P. So uh, save project maybe. So you would have to do that so that you can save project as, and it's going to be a shortcut so you don't have to go up to the top and, and, and do that. And the same is going to be for the mouse. So again, uh, these options might be a little bit different for PC and a little bit different for Mac. And you might want to take a look at this so that you can work a little bit quicker on your computer uh, with Audacity. And then finally, you have the module section, uh, which is, let's say if you're using, it looks, seems like if you're using like a MIDI key control, uh, you can set up different options for, uh, I guess, using Audacity. So it says right here, these are experimental. Enable them only if you read the manual and know what you're doing. So it's pretty much warning you not to mess with this unless you really know what you're doing. But everything else seems fine. So I'm going to hit OK. And those are all the options in Audacity. So in the next video, what we're going to walk through is importing a track and maybe some light recording stuff so we can understand uh, the track functions, panning, volume, that sort of stuff. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finances a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.